Hi, I'm Matthew Trendle. You're watching Enemy. We're here this morning with the Liberties. He did that nice sound. Yeah, awesome. yeah. yeah, yeah. Nice and professional, yeah. Uh, we're here to celebrate the launch of All Quiet on the Eastern Esplanade. We're saying Esplanade, aren't we? You are. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go with Esplanade. But yeah, no, it's not, it's not easy. It's People fine. do say Esplanade. People say Esplanade yeah. down in Margaret. It feels like you guys have been very, very present since the last record. So does it feel kind of surreal now to be here with your baby with some new music? Yeah, it's like we've got a reason to be here now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it does. It, we, I mean, it's a what, bit of a monumental day for us, really, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Run, run, run came out at midnight, you know. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, so, we're, we're fully behind the record. That's not just the official line. That's, that's how we feel, isn't it? Yeah, that's yeah. For the first time we've been so fully behind the record. Let's start with Run, Run, Run. It's the usual question of like, oh, why did you choose to kind of launch with this one? But this kind of seems like a pretty self-referential manifesto about you guys kind of having a reason to exist today, you know? Is that fair? I'll take it. <laughs> yes, that's nice. Um, yeah. I mean, would that have been you, if it had been your decision, would that have been your first decision for the single? It's tricky, isn't it? Yeah, I'm not sure. So it's nice to have the people in the position of power who do make these decisions because I think it's a good idea. Well, it's really a bit, but then as, a... you, as you heard, things are falling into place already. The purpose, so it seems to follow the decision that we didn't make. Yeah, no, I heard that. Yeah, mm, that's good. Yeah, great. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, I guess it is self-referential in a way. It's a, I was trying to work out whether it's a song of hope or a song of fear. Well, I think it's a song of hope. Mm. It's like even though that the, the time has moved on and this person stayed in the same place, that. Um, that uh, you see, he's still going to do what he does, and he's going to be who he is, and doesn't doesn't matter so much time's changing on. I don't know if it's a sad thing or a, or, or a good thing. Yeah, you feeling more hopeful or afraid today? <laughs> oh, eternally hopeful and eternally afraid. <laughs> what if anything would you say it tells us about the record? I think he's. I mean, he's a bit of a red herring, really, in terms of um, I mean, the whole record isn't like that. That's, that, that, that's the, 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 maybe that's getting, getting a nod to the past out of way. I think it sets you up. Probably there's three or four songs on the album which are that sort of tempo and that sort of guitar driven. I mean, there's probably only one or two songs that are, if anything, any punkier. Because it's not even really mid-tempo, is it? It's like it's an old rock and roll and melodic sort of pop song, like yeah. Oliver's Army, that sort of pace. But um, there's, yeah, I, don't, I wouldn't say it was, it was really representative of the record, even though it's one of the strongest songs on there. It's very difficult, I think, these days to write. I, I, I think so anyway, as a someone who considers himself a songwriter, I think it's tricky to present good classic sounding songs which is what I'm into. I mean, cool. putting off fashion, that's what I love. You know I mean, and I love it when bands who's, who've written amazing stuff in the past. I mean, I, I love, you know, little diversions and, you know, mad jazz odysseys, but I love it when bands like uh, the new, uh, the new Cold album, uh, James oh, yeah. Skelly just keeps writing incredibly beautiful melodic songs with little twists, but with still that 60s melody and, and strength and solidity as a song. So I'd say Run and Run's got that, but I'd say there isn't too much of that really on the album it's kind of a bit more eclectic than yeah probably we, would have, we would have if we would have hoped for or would have done it as if we had done it ourselves okay we had the uh geezer who produced it dimitri yeah then we gave him quite a, a free hand so we just gave him the songs and then sort of listened in as he filled around with them yeah. and said okay try like this and a lot of time i was like All right, i'll try it but i'm not gonna we're never gonna do it like that and in the end we did and yeah. then yeah well, speaking of eclecticism, Pete, when we spoke back in um, 2019, you said that uh, you guys were talking about going in kind of like a Sandinista kind of direction, where you had a little bit of rap on there, a little bit of everything. So at what point did you kind of shake that off and come up with this kind of more cohesive batch and a kind of vision for it? When we heard my rapping, I think. <laughs> How is your rapping? Yeah, no, it's Don't all right. Style, it's all right. <laughs> we heard that this morning. Um, yeah, I think um, the Sandinista thing was just, just the, the idea of having everyone involved. And I think when we hadn't read anything, we were a bit scared. The idea of Sandinista, you just put whatever and there's you no know, particular expectations. And I think uh, it kind of might have started in that way, but I think we ended up refining it because we realised what was there. And she did have some kind of direction and didn't want to go somewhere in particular. She tried to snatch my phone. I grabbed her hand and I pulled her close. I said, you only had to ask, you know. Now take me to where the zombies go. Yeah, that didn't make it onto the album, no. Oh, can you beatbox, Cole? Good <laughs> shit. <laughs> no, no, no. The back of the hand trick's good. I've not seen that before. That's good. You can just put it in so you can dub in some uh, beatboxing. That's the it. intro music now. It's all right. We've got a theme song. <laughs> um, so what happened in Jamaica then that kind of made everything gel? 
Um, I don't think it was a waste of time because it was a, it was really an opportunity for us to spend a bit of time together and you sort of just sat, sat back and watched yeah. the coronation I think wasn't it? Yeah, oh, it, was, it, was, it was, no, no, wasn't it? It was the funeral, wasn't it? Yeah, funeral, oh, right. it was Lizzie's funeral. Yeah, yeah. different vibe. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> we I think at the time we were well impressed with what we'd done. And yeah, quite confident. Never were. And then when we got back and and sat and played it to everyone, we sort of looked at her and went, yeah, but. It was essential to get that out of the there way. Was, there was some yeah. yeah. If we had to do, it's better yeah. doing it there than doing it with everyone in the room yeah. and, and feeling the pressure and not getting there. So it was a, an essential part of the, the trip, the journey. Ghost of Queen Liz uh, seep into the songs. Does There's a little bit, actually. Yeah. It's just really strange. We're in this glass, this glass cubicle on a hilltop with a full-on hurricane, just watching the, watching the film, not really knowing what we were feeling. She does pop up in a couple of songs, yeah. Well, one, actually, called Shiver, which I think... Might be coming out as a second single. Yeah. The day they boxed old Lizzie away. Yeah. Yeah, so they're very deferential. Like, actually, let me draw your own conclusions. Yeah. <laughs> the, last, the last king of every dying empire. Just let it die. Sit back, enjoy the ride. The last dream of every dying soldier. I've seen you there. Flowers in your hair. So this glass cubicle. Yeah. Did I mention the glass cubicle? You did. So, I mean, it's, um, they polish it. Yeah, like maniacs every day it's just a thing they've got and so the birds can't tell that they're flying oh. to glass so every so often especially as we windy get these incredible like, you know little golden parrots and like yellow hawks or whatever just come in thwack and suddenly it scares the cat of you so the queen's yeah. dead all the wildlife around you is just it's it's dying off well it, so. yeah as they are everywhere else yeah it's the end of the world isn't it Crikey. we did have a few apocalyptic songs as well which were were a bit more boisterous, I think, than yeah. I could handle. I kept going to bed every time Carl started doing his, like, his big apocalyptic numbers where I could still hear him. They're terrifying. That was like that after the, after the rum shack. Sort of, like, you went to that, uh, and yeah, yeah we, and, and then the, there's the vocal. You couldn't even tune it with the vocoder. It was so out of tune. It was just like, like lads come back from the booze. There's hundreds of them, but there's only you and me. Then you went to bed. and There's, there's, like, there's really strong fragments from Jamaica, which uh, sort of elbowed their way onto the record. But if there are any moments that I'm not 100% about, on the album, it's it's where they've been like welded together with songs that we wrote later, and but it's almost like we just oh, go on, let him, yeah, let him stay. Go on, <laughs> go on, you shit, let him have his own show. <laughs> so. Carl, you just said that the first album was born of the kind of panic and disbelief that you were actually able to do this. Second record was total strife and misery. You said the third record was born of complexity. Yeah, I say it was. Actually. I, you know, I saw that quote. It's just very nice, very well worded. Uh, no tr- but something to add no 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 just to say all we all we want to do is write beautiful songs yeah you know? and I think that's all what we've always wanted to do but we got distracted mostly by ourselves you know? yeah and I think on this occasion it we've like followed the pattern of writing songs which we believe in but we've got nothing else other to say than that this time round do you know what I mean I still yeah. believe in that no song. fanfare no cacophony mm-hmm. this so is the this album this we're proud of this song is like heart of the down under, underneath the pool room yeah. In the, in the basement of Karma Studios with all the mozzies and the, those electric mozzie bats and all that. That's yeah, a, no, I'm all about great, electric mozzie bats. Yeah, you knew that. That's some great things came out of that. Not for the mozzies. <laughs> but, um, this one more of an album of unity connection. Yeah, I think this one we all, we're all facing the same direction. Which is a... Yeah, this a is a less, less, uh, less dead mosquito and more, more dead parrot, really. Yeah. Well, see, it's a very cohesive record and you can hear that kind of connection on it, but does it feel now that you're kind of the band that you were always meant to be without the distractions is there always going to be that kind of ramshackle element baked in or is like i think there's plenty of ramshackle baked in still yeah um yeah i don't think i don't think we really know what band we want to be we just want to write a few songs in the moment really just so happens at this moment they're all facing the same directions <laughs> yeah i think there's been a lot of focus and everyone's been working on their personal place in the world as well everyone's, everyone's got very different lives we managed to find something to unite over and that, that's what the Albion Room's just been really good for as well having that in bricks and mortar and uh and co-owned by everybody and yeah it's just feel, it feels like it's part of this journey that's been going on for a while now yeah also because we only had fragments really as well so for 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 the most part the other albums were basically written before we went in the studio maybe the third album's not quite true but definitely the first two albums we knew what we were doing bang all these songs just appeared out of nowhere and we and we recorded them this time it's definitely a case of people have been presenting really strong ideas and everyone else has just been like tucking in really you know what i mean putting yeah. the bibs on rolling up the sleeves and like 
tuna fat, uh, gristle, and yeah, you know, a bit of mustard. Yeah, you know, I think yeah. that's really the case, isn't it? Yeah. You know, like, is this is this a strong enough idea on its own? And then what happens? There's so many times on this album where I thought I knew what the song was. Like songs I opened on the radio, I thought that was written and it had its its place in the world. It's completely different now to uh, you know any other any vision I had of it or yeah. You know, for the best of it. Yeah, it sounds, yeah. And, no, it's for the best, yeah. Oh, that's a future Absolutely. encore song, I think. Mean. Yeah. 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 yeah, nice. Yeah, light us up, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. get the old the backing on yeah. and, uh, and strings. John just sat down at the piano, cool as you like, loud as you like, <laughs> that's how you pronounce it, and just said, why well, don't you try it like this? And suddenly played it in this sort of like epic Beatlesy way, and I thought, ah. That's very loud. But then first, the first I went, no, it's got to be jangly. And then I just... I let go. It's hard to let go of that, isn't it? Drew on it, he needs to be dreaming. I let go and thought, oh, that's it, the song's gone, it's going to drown, and it didn't. It just sort of came up in a massive water spout with all these, like, nymphs and goblets, goblins. Goblins. And next thing you know, it was, like, bursting, bursting down on us from the sky, you know. Yeah. How would you say the spirit of the record kind of changed when um, John and Gary got involved? I think it's moments like what Peter just described, the moments to do with everyone being there, having the confidence and... You know, there, there, there's sort of a flow state that happens when, when uh, something takes over that, that is, you know, that everyone's, that's part of everyone and everyone's contribution. And I think that happened in, in a few places, really. And that, that gave, we weren't directions we wouldn't normally have had the confidence to go in because it felt right and everyone was on the same page, looking in the same direction. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, I've got to stop saying that. I'm trying to find a new uh, <laughs> metaphor for looking in the same direction. And um, lyrically, what would you say you're mining on this record? How would you describe kind of the character of what holds this, the words together? It's one of those things where you kind of realise what things are about after the fact, I think, on a few of them. Well, well but then you're probably going to say that's not the case for you. you know, I was going to say, it's probably the most stressful times, really, of the writing was, was those mornings when we were sat with the pads, where we were, you know, we were getting told by the, the producer, all right, this, this needs some vocals, and, we're like, and we'd just been ad-libbing for quite a few of the songs. So there were these sort of frantic sessions, which became a little bit... Uh, stretched out you know over a period of weeks where we just couldn't couldn't seem to get it together with the lyrics and then uh and then they just then they just appear again that like, sort of out of nowhere from this uh this mythical water spout but yeah it was, it was fair to say it's pretty stressful right some of the finishing some of the songs yeah, lately it was yeah which is what makes it even more precious maybe is that it was touch and go for a couple of songs we just thought we can't let it go out half fast yeah, yeah. all half assed, as I weirdly say in uh, songs in the radio. The artwork, the title, and listen to a song like Mustang. It feels like a lot of the kind of characters of Margate. There's a lot of faded seaside glam on the record, too. Yeah, I think that song was inspired by that, really. Um, but that's one thing came up right in a lot of the songs. I think Carl was quite, I hate it when we're sitting down to write a song and someone says, right, what's this song about? But there was a little bit of that going on. You know, there was sort of what, what tale. Are we telling here? Mustang is definitely a, a story. I mean, yeah, it started. It did have about nine verses. There's so yeah, many characters. So many characters. got the axe. Yeah, we had uh, Factory Dave. Dave. He didn't make it. There was the scaffolding. Crew. Yeah, uh, the bus. I oh, know the buskers. He's made it. No, yeah. he didn't. He's out. Is he? Yeah. See, see, see that. No, oh, he's made it on the album cover. Yeah, that's because he, he's the central character of uh, Man and Melody. He's a schizophrenic <laughs> busker. Oh, I see. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. How oh, very clever. You're nicely done. Yeah, that's good. That. Well, let's go through some other bangers on the record. Um, have a friend. Seems like a kind of nice and raw because something kind of speaks for itself, kind of about unity and such. Yeah, the face of war, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It wasn't called the Ballad of Back Mud. Yeah, yeah, it was called that. Yeah, yeah. There was a lot going on that time. It's you know when this. Well, there still is, isn't it? Well, yeah. But like when the world is basically a war. But the, the, the news story, it, it was quite fresh then. You know, like and when these news stories break and it's so devastating and and seismic and you don't really know how to uh what, what you think and the song can kind of process it for you yeah merry old england is quite beautiful um should there be a kind of question mark at the end of that song title what are you kind of trying to invoke with merry old england would you say just i i love that song so much i think it's like unfathomably beautiful like carl doing that weird dorsey bit and i just sort of get to shriek and shout shout a bit about like, shriek here you can't hold me back i want to climb your cliff and scale your fence and then take over your country sort of thing, yeah. No, I don't think there's any question marks at all. One man's merry old England is another man's hard over. And one man's mm. shitty old England was, it used to be, um, there used to be uh, puddles and nappies on the ground, but nappies was too yeah. green to sink. 
puffing up the junction. But then it's really isn't that one, one man's end time capitalism, London is another man's just playground of dreams where anything's possible, you know, like so in the mythical city that you finally reached, you know what I mean, after like trying to break out of your of your little town and you know, and fulfill your dreams. It's like you know for all the cynicism and the you know and the talk about being pushed out of town, there's another generation that will come and find a way to bring it alive again or find a little space that they can make their own. You know what I mean? Yeah. And despite the weight of the fucking so, well, it's more of a montage and banging the drum, particularly. Yeah. No, no I was gonna say, it's weird. When I've, I've tried playing it acoustically to people, and, the, and you, some of the lyrics are a bit quite strangely provocative. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, even to say the word, like, if you say, like, Syrians, Iraqis, and Ukrainians, welcome to Merrill England, how you find the Merrill England, and start singing about visas and dinghies, you know, and the white, the white cliff, the cliffs once white, now grey, and in the stadium light. People, you can see, like, People getting agitated and excited because, but for both from from both sides, because like both sides might might think they know it, it, it is exactly what you're saying. But yeah, it's basically just asking, you know, because I had that asking this kid, you know, yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. asking this kid on recording Margate. He's just like he's landed there, just like kicking his heels, not really knowing what what to do. Uh, how he's finding it, you know, yeah. what's going on with you, mate? How's things? You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you're all scattered across, with speaking of kind of different perceptions of England, you're all scattered across the world now. How do you find a day like today, a weekend like this, when you come back to your old playground of London? How does it seem today? To, it's, you know, we're you've just, been down Old Street recently. No, we were driving down Old Compton Street, and um, because we used to work in the theatres. We felt like a couple of old gits, like... Yeah, uh, just did, literally like, saying, I remember when that was, you could literally... But, You've been having me present for so long, you can actually dial back the time in your mind and see all these different incarnations of, of, of the city. It's just the most magnificent organism of a, of a, of a, of a place, of a playground, of, a, you know, the city's harsh, the hard to see is fair, you know, and, and it is, it's so alive. And, and I think it's actually quite beneficial to have, to have perspective on that through time. And I feel, I feel like it, it never leaves me, you know, because like, it's, I feel a part of it still, even though I'm, I'm not living it. So, yeah. Because a lot of feelings, I'm surprised yeah. myself. I love it. I'm, maybe I'm a bit over. It's a bit too much for me, actually. A bit overstimulated because <laughs> I lead quite a rural, quiet life now. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, just uh, just doing the promotion work and then getting back, getting back to the wife and the dogs. Uh, <laughs> to be honest, like, but yeah, I'll turn your back on old London. I could quite easily fall for it all over <laughs> again. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, because we, when we, when you were releasing um, Fantasy Life, we talked about how. Um, being clean and living a serene kind of lifestyle in France, it kind of shaped that record to this kind of own entity. How did you find kind of approaching a Libertines record from that different perspective that you didn't have on previous ones of being clean, of being away from the city, of being... I don't know. It's, it's just an everyday, an everyday scrap, really. You know what I mean? It's like proper toe-to-toe with the demons. But um, because I believe so much so in him you know, and Gary and John and this record... It's a pleasure, really. So I just feel like I want to do my bit, be as professional as I can, let people hear the songs, and then if they're up for it, go and play them. Go and play them to them. You know what I mean? If not, you know, try again maybe, or I can just just crack on with the hotel, see if we can do anything with that. Yeah. Well, that was it. So when we, when I came down to the Albion room, just as it was open, um, COVID was lifting, we had the chicken burger, put it back on the menu. Just so. Clock and burger, yeah, 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 okay. <laughs> um, but you were talking about your vision of... Um, the Albion rooms being kind of like Warhol's factory, like a HQ where creatives come and go and everyone feeds off each other. But would you say that the way you're talking about it on this record, it almost feels as if the Albion room is like a fifth member of the band. Yeah, I think it is our tangible embodiment of what, we, of what we're doing. When we live in three different countries and, and we only see each other through touring schedules, we need something, it's essential. Tell the missus, it's essential that we have something to find us. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, what, what were we saying? No, no, yeah, chicken boos, man, definitely. <laughs> It's a big responsibility for the kids who are running it for us as well. You know what I mean? So just, I think we might have found the right people. You know what I mean? Who yeah, strike that balance between being able to sort of run the books properly and, uh, and, and keep the creative and embrace the flow. Because the, the, the you know, there's a ley line that runs from the Esplanade through under QPR, QPR, sorry, QPR. under Loftus Road, <laughs> right, and goes to Glastonbury. You know what I mean? So even without finding the right people halfway there, but it definitely does help. But you know, if there are any aspiring poets musicians or uh chambermaids actually you can't i can't get enough good cleaning stuff uh yeah see these the albion rooms really for a gig or a, or a job yeah not a lot of bands have that kind of an enterprise but a home 
but that's also a gift to kind of the community as well. Yeah, but that's 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 the plan. That's how we do. How we try and see it, and how we try and keep it. Yeah, it's quite hard work, but it's keen. Yes. And what can we expect from these uh, December shows? Kind of libertines take over market. Oh yeah, I think we, I think we're just um, well. We hope to say that after all is said and done, a good time is had by all. Yeah, come Monday morning. That was my line. I, I prepared, prepared that one. Um, yeah, no, we're finally going to play these tunes. Uh, tunes like Mustangs and Merry Old England. Um, all of them songs, son. Can't wait. Yeah, I can't so wait. It's kind of yeah. chomp, chomping at the bit, really, to play these songs. Probably a few, few rehearsals, I think. Maybe. Yeah, I yeah. mean, can have an hour purity, but yeah, as a yes. got to. No, definitely. Yeah, it's a bit of a must. But yeah, no, I'm so excited to play the new songs. Really, it's the first time we've not like butchered songs half half written um, live. We managed to pick, keep a lid on it. So yeah, so it's sort of come forth as new stuff. Yes. And did that um, up the bracket or give you a taste for? Arenas. I don't know, really. I don't think we did any arenas. Did we? Did, we did Wembley Arena. We did an arena some years ago. I mean, I'll play anywhere, me. I'm doing, I, I love, I love it. The little ones and some big ones. But I mean, I think it depends on, it's, it's important that, that when people feel it doesn't lose its intimacy. But, you know, I don't know. What, what, do, you, what do you prefer? Do you prefer like a, I mean, for a band like ours, would you say you prefer? Well, I like, I like, I do like to sit down nowadays. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> See, I like to sit down on stage well, nowadays. We just, we just play, yeah, maybe we'll just play arenas for. But no, I like it. So, um, so you're at the Hackney Empire once and that felt right. I like, you kind of, you, you should be in a crumbling Victorian theatre, much like this resplendent Victorian hotel we're in today. Thanks Langham for having us, by the way. Um, yeah, kind of crumbling Victorian England, I think is a good place for the Best place for the liberties. Yeah. Well said, that man. Yeah, cool. I did that quite a lot. Quite a lot. Of, yeah, quite a lot of the places I play in France are like not so much crumbling, but you know, seated. You know, seated theatres. Like you know, a chair on stage, the dogs like slippers, just just playing the songs. You know, whereas like the Libertines is like he's a bit like no no flip flops, no sitting down on stage. Definitely the dogs get out there hundred percent. And then, and I don't know, I like that too. I like that too. But the dogs don't like it too loud. Yeah, no, I know the dogs. Got really sensitive ears, dogs. Oh, yeah. You're sensitive, mind. You got huskies, right? No, no, we got a husky. Yeah. Ah, right, right. We got, right. We got uh, a big old mix, mix of things as well. But I, like, um, I think I like standing up on stage. I've still got a bit of standing up left in me, hopefully. Yeah. Are you planning big shows next year? Return to Glasgow? Not really planning anything yet, have we? No. Probably a probably a little tour, up. A little toury. Oh yeah. Oh, they tour def- up. I definitely do a tour. See up. how the album does. At the end it of the year, really well, we might get like a, a bus each, like we had in the night, nineteen fifteen, in the two thousand fifteen. <laughs> that would be nice. That. Yeah, or yeah, a bus each. We didn't do much for like band uh, continuity, but it was no, fucking great. That's nice. That? A bus, you like a bus each. It was wow. the nicest bus. Thirty for one gig. That was. That was for oh. Reading. In them days, no, everyone had a bus, and I had a minivan because they wouldn't. The bus company wouldn't <laughs> let me. The bus company That's wouldn't right, let me have a bus. The dogs eating the seats. <laughs> uh, with Pete, while you're here, we have to ask you about the. The movie that's coming out, um, made with your bandmate and wife. How does it feel coming out now with a new record in this period of kind of putting your own life under the microscope? I don't think it is really putting my life under the microscope. I mean, those, those, the, the period that, that she's used you know, in the film, I was, I'm still wearing my Zurich Film Festival wristband because it was premiered there the other day. And I'm really happy for, for Katia, really. I mean, I don't. It's been it's been finished for 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 quite a while. Do you know what I mean? So, doesn't really feel new for me. But that is a big thing for her. She's really excited and just hope the world gives her the, the credit she's due. And then, like, it's really just thinking about the next project for her and if we're going to work together. Do you know what I mean? She wants to do like a a fiction film. So we're talking about that and what we're going to do. It's a really exciting time. And hopefully, if this if this does well, then. Uh, or you know, it is in the film industry. It's all about it's all about money, isn't it? So if uh, she can get the money together for the next project, it'd be amazing. Yeah. I'll just be made up for. Her. Yeah, it's 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 quite it's quite heavy, like watching some of that stuff. But it is really a different time, I think, with the fuzz of the fuzz and like the uh, the force field or camouflage I felt with the drugs at the time. I wasn't really that asked about what people thought or or how I looked. But looking at it now, it's yeah. So does it feel like you've kind of drawn a curtain over that part of your life quite physically with this film and saying, oh, that's behind me now? Yeah, I still feel really connected to that fella up there on the screen. I can see it's me, but... He's behind you. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, think, I don't think I'll be able to watch it again, to be honest. Have you seen it, Carl? Yeah, yeah. 
What was that like? Because you were obviously yeah, I mean, a any, passenger seat at the time. Anything like that is kind of hard to watch because I kind of like scrunched myself into a like, defensive. Um, but yeah, I think it's. Um, I think we should make it for like ten years. I think it's a beautiful portrayal. Um, I think it's you know it's it's through her eyes. Uh, I think she's done a she's done a great job. With it. Do you think biopics are quite in fashion? Do you reckon we'd ever see a Libertines biopic? Oh, we talk, we've talked about that occasionally, don't we? Yeah. And then we always have a row about who's playing who. No, we've even sat down and tried to write some some like, some screenplays. So it always turns into just farcical comedy, though, doesn't it? It does. So, quite, quite, well, I quite like the puppet show. I thought that was... Uh, oh, yeah. Out. I thought about that. I thought about that. I thought about that. I thought about Yeah. Well... <laughs> skin to minted, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah I, know, I know, I know. I know. That's just like the Broadway play or something will be good. Yeah, they, I mean, there's, uh, there's plenty there. There was so, a musical made in Korea, wasn't there? Yeah, yeah, they did. I, I, I think no, there was a North Korean, um, <laughs> South Korean uh, stage musical made. Put the lights out. Yeah. So the funding might have tried up for that. Oh, really? <laughs> but yeah, well, no, I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, literally. He said it's going to run and run. I think it closed after two <laughs> nights, yeah. <laughs> so who have you got down to play each other? Well, now with all this, uh, all this, what's it? This oh, AI, AI, you yeah. can just play yourself, can't you? Oh, yeah, just de-age yourself. So just have us playing with ourselves and that, you know what I mean, as usual. Yes. How does the future feel right now? Because it's, um, it's always felt a bit sort of, there have been times when it's been uncertain, is there going to be, is there going to be a Libertines next year? How do you feel about Libertines record number five? The reason, the reason why not, would have nothing to do whether or not we were relevant, where with the would have nothing to do whether we were relevant you know, or, or getting fat or something, or it, it would just be whether or not we had any decent songs. Yeah. That's really the only way I can look at it. I just still, I just still get off on writing wicked tunes. Like you said something, you said something really weird to me recently. You said, I, I don't care about being cool anymore. I just want to write beautiful songs. I'm like, so we all, that's what, that's what we were always doing. It's just, 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 just Apparently not. <laughs> just, 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 just remind me that I wasn't cool. <laughs> That must be nice to be cool again while with Indie Sleaze Revival and kids getting back into... Is there an Indie Sleaze Revival? Yeah. I didn't even know it was called Indie Sleaze until someone told me the other day. Yeah. I yes. Is there a name for our movement? I yes. More Indie, less Sleaze though, yeah? Yeah, it's a bit of a strange one in this day and age. Yeah. But so you haven't got any kind of Libertines bucket list moments left to tick off, just the thrill of existence, really? Yeah, no, I've got a fair amount of a new batch of songs. On the brew, so mm. they're incomplete. I know you like Carl to hear yeah, and see what he can do with. If he's not into them, then I'll put them out. I'm in. You know what I mean? Same as yeah, ever. That's where it goes. Yeah, I think. Uh, I mean, I'm always striving for the perfect song myself. So, you know, we just. I, I don't know if you ever find it. It's a bit Sisyphean, isn't it? But uh, uh, we'll get there. Maybe we'll not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Safe to say, it won't be another eight years, or if you'll have to keep his weight. Yeah, maybe. Well, yeah, there's no idea. Hopefully not. But we well, see how it goes. I'm trying not to put that fresh on myself at this stage. Um, I'd like to think it's. I'd like to get into like a flow state where songs just come out. But I find it. I find it quite hard work. I mean, I can remember 20, 25 years ago, or maybe twenty four years ago, sat in John's bedroom and he had a song called um, Annabelle Lee. But yeah, remember? I do, of course. And no dawn stood up above, and no demons in the sea could ever separate, separate me from, from Annabelle, Annabelle Lee. We never used to. We never used to do it in the band because. Wasn't that we didn't want John to sing, but we secretly both really liked the melody and we thought we could maybe one day sort of worm our way into it. And and that's what's happened now. Like 25 years later, it's turned out to be the man with the melody and we've all got a verse on it. Me, Carl and John all sing a verse on it and Gary sings on the chorus. And yeah, yeah it's kind of a, a, a strange like, the song end of days cycle, song. cycle of endless finality, but also, yeah. A, a completion and a full stop over poor old Annabelle Lee, who's like actually been booted off, booted off the scene completely. You know what I mean? So like, whether he's going to play who? Yeah. Poor old, uh, poor old Annabelle Lee's getting played by one of Carl's black dogs that comes crawling forth in the in the in the, in the, in the morning. Yeah. That's a bit about about depression in there. Yeah. Up the Albion, thanks guys. Thank you. Up the Thank Albion, you very much. yeah, quite right. <laughs>